Good morning. My name's Jim Walker. I'm the pastor of uh, Revival from Down Under in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne in Australia. This morning, <coughs> uh, I'm going to do a topic which I've done before, but I've, I've given it a new headline. Um, I've brought scriptures out around this area before, but this, what I've called it is the potter and the clay. The potter and the clay. <coughs> In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and in verse 15, the Apostle Paul tells us that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that not, need, that not needs to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, when we study, I believe this study should be done from all scripture because of what the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 where he says, all scripture is profitable, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine. That word doctrine is teaching. So all scripture is profitable to teach you. Hallelujah. And what it teaches you in, it teaches you in righteousness. If we carry on reading that, it says, for reproof, that is evidence, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So all scripture teaches us and instructs us in righteousness, and righteousness is the ways of God, not our way. And God's ways are taught. They don't just come on you. God's ways are taught. Hallelujah. We're also told in Romans 15 verse 4 by the Apostle Paul, where he says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Again, we learn by being taught or by reading, hallelujah, and the things written aforetime being Old Testament scripture. We also know in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that has proceeded from the mouth of God. And every word that has proceeded from the mouth of God is all scripture, from Genesis to Revelation. When we study the scriptures, I believe we find that God has not changed. What God purposed uh, in his plan for man, that purpose is still his will. He's not changed. All right? And so, and we find that God, the plan for man, the purpose of God for man, was actually uh, counseled by God before the foundation of the earth. Before the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah. If we go into Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, and in verse 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man, that's Adam, of the dust of the ground. So, the first man, Adam, was created from the dust of the ground. If you want to, if you want to put it in a different way, God took a handful of dirt, a handful of clay, and formed Adam. Made Adam from a handful of dirt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're just dirt. Hallelujah. When we first started. But then we're also told in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, it said, And God said, 
Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And so, and let them have dominion. See, God, man has lost the dominion that God gave them. Basically because they don't believe the word. We don't really believe it anymore. But God gave Adam dominion over every living thing. Hallelujah. Now, here we're told that God made Adam, made man in his own image and likeness from a bit of dirt. From a bit of dirt. Hallelujah. What an impossible thing in the natural. Yet all things are possible to them that believe. Now, it's not just in his image, but it's in his image and his likeness. That's like his character, who he is. Not just how he looks, but who he is, what he is, his character. How, everything about God, God said, I'll make man in that image and likeness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we know, if we look in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, God says, I am the Lord, I change not. So what God planned and purposed from the beginning of the earth, even though Adam sinned, it didn't change God's purpose for man. God knew that Adam would sin and God made provision before the foundation of the earth for that sin. And that provision would be that God the Word would come in flesh and die as a man. Hallelujah. To forgive us all of our sins. Glory to God. The first sacrifice ever made was in the book of Genesis in, in Genesis chapter 3 where God in verse 21 and where God made clothes for Adam and Eve of animal skins so animals had died and he covered he covered Adam and Eve with the skins of the animals which had shed the blood for him. Hallelujah. God sacrificed animals. And we're told in Proverbs, the lambs are for your clothing. So I believe there would have been lambs because they would foreshadow the sacrifice of Jesus as the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Amen. God allowed for all this. God knew he was going to sin. And God forgave him. God forgave him. Hallelujah. Amen. In Romans chapter 5, if we go into Romans chapter 5, we know that this sin went into the bloodstream of Adam and passed from Adam to all natural mankind to all natural mankind because the scripture says all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God hallelujah in verse 12 of verse 5 chapter 5 it says wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Amen. Glory to God. But through Jesus Christ, all are forgiven. All have sinned. Through Christ, all are forgiven. If they accept him and receive him.
as their Savior. Amen. If we go into, uh, I'll read, carry on. For unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, listen to this, nevertheless death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Adam is a figure. If you study that word figure, it uh, comes from the Greek word tupos, which means a type or a, an example. The same word used in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6 and 11 for examples and ensamples. It comes from the same, word, the same Greek word. Everything happened to natural Israel. Hallelujah. And so, who is the figure? Who is the figure that he's speaking of that was to come? Adam is a figure of him that was to come. So who is the figure? Jesus is the figure. Because when we go into 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it, and verse 44 through 48, the Apostle Paul reveals to us a principle of God which is first a natural, then afterwards that which is spiritual, using Adam as being first the natural, and the Lord from heaven, Jesus, as that which is spiritual. All the old creation, all the old creation came through Adam. All the new creation comes through Jesus Christ and it begins when you are born again. When you are born again, you are the beginning of a new creation in God. It has begun. It has began. Are you born again? It's began. It's a working process. The work is not yet finished, but the work has began. Amen? Because the scripture says so. Glory to God. We are a work in process. The work has begun, but is not yet finished. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. When sin <coughs> entered into Adam and passed on to all men, that sin marred the vessel. The sin marred the vessel. And Jesus died that the marring of the vessel could be rectified and put right that the vessel could be born again and remade. That the vessel can be remade, not from the outside, but from the inside out. God begins to remake us from what he puts into our heart and, and to, because when, <clears throat> when we get born again, a word, a seed, a seed of the word of God enters into your heart and it, from that seed, that is the new creation, that seed, when looked after and watered and, and fed, <coughs> has the capacity to produce like kind. And that like kind is the new creation and it's a Godman. It's a Godman. Man becoming like God. Man has the capacity to come into the full image and likeness of God because of what's been planted in you if it's watered and fed correctly and the weeds pulled out of the ground. Because the weeds, they're also in the ground, which are uh, 
symbolized by the works of the flesh, they prevent the seed from reaching full spiritual maturity in his likeness. Hallelujah. Amen. If we turn to Jeremiah, we see, uh, we see what, Je what God tells Jeremiah, and this is a picture, this is a foreshadowing of the vessel being remade. It's a foreshadowing of a, a picture of the vessel being remade. In Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah 18. And I'm going to read from verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, now just remember, just remember, uh, sin marred the vessel. And even though we have been born again, we are still committing sin. And so God is still trying to deal with that sin. And so the process, he is still working on the clay with his hands. And the hands of the potter represent his ministries. God's ministries are his hands on earth. And they, through the word, are uh, working on the clay to make the clay good again. Hallelujah. O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Now, we just, uh, we just read in... 1 Corinthians 15, verse 44 through 48, the principle of first the natural and then that which is spiritual. So what God said to natural Israel is also saying to spiritual Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You know, we know Jesus said you cannot put new wine in old wine skins. That means this, before I was born again, I was an, an old wine skin. And so new wine must go into a new wine skin because new wine is still fermenting. And if it's an old wine skin, it would through the fermentation process, it would burst the skin and you'd lose the wine. So the wine has to go into a new skin. And wine speaks of the life of God. That's why we take communion. The life is in the blood. The life is in the wine. And so the new, the new, the life, the new life, the new life has to go into a new wine skin. And so we know we knew, hallelujah, because we've been born again. And so the life of God is, you know, it's still fermenting. When you're born again, it's still, that, it's still fermenting. It's still fermenting. But because you are a new vessel, you are able to contain what is happening on your insides. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. If we go over into Isaiah, chapter 64, and in verse 8, 
But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, thou art the potter, and we are the work of your hand. Hallelujah. We are the work. We are the continuing work of his hands. You don't, you don't get a lump of clay. Look at me. You don't get a lump of clay and put it on the wheel and it's finished. That does not happen. The clay, to be formed into a pot, has to be a certain consistency of moisture. If it's too wet and sloppy, it won't form, it'll just keep falling apart. It has to be the right consistency to be formed into a beautiful pot by the hand of the potter. Now, before the clay goes on the wheel, there has been a lot of work, a lot of work, a process. The clay has gone through a process even before it gets on the wheel because it has to be emptied or rid of all bits of debris, stones, roots, etc. before it goes on the wheel. And they do this by pushing the clay through mesh or sieves to remove the stones and it's worked and worked and worked and worked until the clay has got no impurities in it. Because impurities are found in the pot once it goes into the oven. If there are still impurities in the clay, in the pot, when it goes into the oven, it will break. It will break. Hallelujah. Now, another process, once the pot is made, It then goes through another process of drying. Now, put it on the shelf and you let all the moisture dry out of the, out of the clay. Now, is the pot ready once it's dry? No. Because if you, the purpose of the pot is to contain water or liquids, whatever, right? Now, at this time, that pot can be totally dry. And if you put water into that pot before it's fired, the clay will absorb the water and just fall apart. And just go into a lump of, a lump of muddy clay again. The purpose of drying the pot out is to, is to get it ready for firing. So that if there's any moisture in it, when it's fired, it will break. But it's fired to contain water. So here we see a process of preparing the clay, making the vessel, letting the vessel stand, and sometimes we feel like we go through dry seasons, and God's doing his work in you. Don't think God has not finished the work because you're going through a dry season, and that he's tucked his hands off you. No, he's just getting ready for firing. He's getting you ready for putting you in the oven 
so that you can contain and carry the water and that water being the water of his word. Hallelujah. Amen. Unless you are fired, you never carry the water. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. When the clay is put onto the wheel and put into the hands of the potter, you don't see clay jumping off the wheel. Yet many Christians get put on the wheel and then they jump off. And when they jump off, the work is stopped. The process has discontinued. And many Christians are in and out of God and they, they, they come in, they go out, they come in, they go out, and the work stops. In this time that the work stops, then they dry out and, and, and the clay is useless. Got to, got to, to for for the clay to get, they've got to spend time in. Some Christians think they can come back into church after a while out of church and be exactly where they were when they went out. No, 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 no. It doesn't happen that way. It takes, it takes the water of the word to prepare the clay again, ready for molding. It's a process. And Christians, many Christians, stop that process by walking in and out of church. Hallelujah. And we know, we know that in the days we now live, that the scripture says, you know, we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some will be in the days we now live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 43, if we turn to Isaiah 43. And in verse 2, it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Saviour. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to pass through the water. We have to pass through the fire. But just remember, just remember in Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They were thrown into the fiery furnace and passed through it because God was with them. And they came out with no smell of smoke on them. Their clothing was not damaged because God was with them. Amen. The, the bands were broken. They were set free. The fire sets you free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In if we go to First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four. And in verse 12, it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. But rejoice 
in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. So as we're going through it, we, we might not feel like rejoicing, but he tells us to rejoice. Because, you know, we're going to go through it. If we want to come out at the other end as a, a vessel that will contain water, we need to go through the fire. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The stones and the grassroots, etc., that are in the clay, they are like, you can liken them to the works of the flesh. And God is trying to remove the works of the flesh by the washing of the water by the word. If any remain, then the vessel will break. Hallelujah. If we go into 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. In verse 11 it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work should be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he built thereupon, he shall receive his reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Zechariah, if we turn to Zechariah 13. Zechariah 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass, and the land saith the Lord, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. This is prophetic of the day we now live in. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and I will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. Hallelujah! We are going to be tried as silver is tried. Purifying the sons of Jacob. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! In 1 Peter chapter 1. Verse 6. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. We have to keep at it. We're being tried by fire. 
we're being purified by the fire, that we will come out as gold or silver, preferably the gold. In, in, uh, in I think it's Haggai, he says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord. Just turn to that. Haggai. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. The, the glory of the house that we now belong to is going to be greater than the glory of the early church. Hallelujah. There's going to be a greater glory. Hallelujah. Because we all have gone through the fire. The process is already at work. Glory to God. In Isaiah 48, I've just saw a verse here in Isaiah 48. I wasn't going to read it, but I will. Isaiah 48, verse 3. I have declared the former thing from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them. I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. Isaiah 48, verse 3. What God has spoken, what God has said, it's going to happen. It can't be stopped. My word shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 9 of Isaiah 48, For my name's sake will I defer my anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, even for my own sake will I do it. For how should my name be polluted, and I will not give my glory unto another? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's always thinking about you. He's always concerned about you. I believe the process of the, of the vessel being remade begins when we get born again. At this time we become a new creature in God, a new creation. In Ephesians chapter 4, I'll read from verse 20. But you have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. You put him off, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on, you put on the new man, you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, said the Lord. Wherefore, putting away from you, lying, speak every man the truth with his neighbour, for we are members one of another. Know ye not that the scripture says, no liars shall go to heaven? Christians think they can get away with lying. 
They need to rightly divide the word. Be not angry and sin not. Put it away, lying. Speak every man the truth with his neighbour. For we are members of one another and we are members of his body. Glory to God. Don't give place to the devil. Don't let your anger go down. Don't let your... Don't let your anger continue when the sun's gone. Forgive before the sun goes down because you don't know whether you're going to wake up or not. Before we go, before we go to sleep, we have to be right with God. There is a, an old prayer that, as I lay my head, when I lay, when I lay my down to sleep, I pray, my Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. We've got to be right with him at all times. Because we, knew, we know not when he's going to take us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> In Colossians chapter 3. In verse 10 it says, And you have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after, after the image of him that created you. You, are, you, have, you put on the new man, and the new man is being recreated in the image of God. In the likeness of him that created you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I'm very excited by this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 2, if we, if we read you know, we've been talking about the vessel being remade, that, and I said that we are a work under construction. And this tells us, this tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, that we, it says, verse 20, we are built. All right, we, are, we are a building under construction. The building has not yet been finished. It's a work in process. We are, and you are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows. You don't just get a load of bricks and go, you've got a building. The bricks have got to be put together and they are formed until the building is finished. Hallelujah. Verse 22. In whom you also are builded together for the habitation of God through the Spirit. We are being builded. We have not yet been built. The work is not yet finished. We are a work in process. So do not, do not, do not be too hard on yourself. We will make mistakes. All we've got to do is repent. And the work continues. Amen? In Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 29, he said, For whom he did for no, that is, for whom God, for whom God, let's go back into verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are what? Called according to his purpose. For them that are called 
according to his purpose. Hallelujah. If you just keep your hand there and go into Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, and that purpose is for you. We are his purpose. Verse 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. Hallelujah! He is working things according to what he counseled before the foundation of the earth. His purpose, so long as we stay on the wheel, will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Back in Romans. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed, to be conformed to the image of his Son. We are being conformed. It, it's not a done work. We are being conformed into the image of his Son. Hallelujah. The word conform comes from the Greek word somorphous. Now, you, you, you may have heard a word similar to that, and it's called metamorphous. It comes from the same root Greek word. It comes from the same root Greek word. And the thing is, a metamorphous occurs with a butterfly. When, when it goes from a caterpillar through a stage of rest or sleep, and then comes out when the work has been done into a beautiful butterfly. And God wants us to rest. Hallelujah. We are, we are in a stage of the process being from the dirty, filthy worm that we were into the beautiful butterfly that the worm will produce. As, the, as, as it goes through its metamorphosis and the change occurs. The change is happening. There is a metamorphosis occurring on our insides and the change is happening. And we will come out like the beautiful butterfly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are being conformed. The word conformed it also means jointly formed. Jointly formed. The scripture says, what is it? We are joint heirs with Christ. We are being jointly formed because we are joint heirs with him. Hallelujah. What he has, what he is, we are and we will be because we are jointly formed. Isn't this awesome? It doesn't matter about your past. It's not about your past. It's not how you start. It's how we finish. We are running a race. The race is not over yet. You've got to be in the race to finish the race. But many, many people can be in a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. But we know that marathon, many people drop out before they get to the finishing line. We are not to drop out. We are to cross the line. We only finish the race when we cross the line. And then you will receive the prize. You don't receive the prize if you drop out halfway through. Hallelujah. The word predestinate means to predetermine or to determine beforehand and God predestinated us God determined beforehand what he was going to do in our lives that we would be created in his image and likeness and it's not just you, 
got to understand, when we study scripture and you get a full understanding of what God wants to do in every Christian's life. Get, you need a picture of it. Hallelujah. In, in Philippians, Philippians chapter 3. Verse 20, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall, who shall, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Hallelujah. He is the God of the impossible. He can turn a lump of dirt into a wonderful image of himself. Not only he can, but he is going to do it. Hallelujah. In, in 1 Corinthians 15, we, it, and verse 44 through 48, is, is the, first, the principle of first and natural. What he did for Adam, he'll do, he'll do with us. Hallelujah. But then when we read, you know, if you turn over to that, 1 Corinthians 15, you see, then you read, it says, verse 48, as is the earthy, such are they that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they that are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthy, Adam, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly Adam, and that is Jesus Christ. We shall! We shall! Glory to God. What image is that? We shall bear the image of the heavenly Adam. What image is that? It's of Jesus Christ. But what image is that? Well, let's have a look. Because we're told in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spoke in times passed unto the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory, this is speaking of Jesus, Jesus is the brightness of his glory, and he is the express image of his Father's person. He is the express image and likeness of his Father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. And we are being transformed. We are being changed into the image, not just the image of Jesus the Son, but into the express image of him and his Father. We will be just like them forever. Amen. Glory to God. You know, in 2 Corinthians, a couple more scriptures. In 2 Corinthians and chapter 4, verse 18, it says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to to glory. We are being changed into the same glory of the Lord. We are being changed into the same glory of the Lord, into the same image, that express image from glory to glory. <coughs> Hallelujah. 
And if we are being changed, if we, that means it has not yet occurred. That means it's a process. We are being changed. The process is already underway. You know, David had a wonderful... We, 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 get, to, we get to be changed on earth. We know we'll be in his likeness when we go to heaven. But God wants his likeness to be on earth. Hallelujah. Just one more scripture, just in John 17. John 17. Verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Verse 19. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for them alone, for, for, but for them also which shall believe on me through the word. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. For that they also may be one in us, for the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. In exactly the same image as God. Hallelujah. David knew it. In Psalm, I'll just finish with this scripture. In Psalm 17, David said in verse 15, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Well, I don't want to awake with that likeness. And yet I do. I want it to happen now. I want to happen now. I don't want to... I don't want to be naturally dead to wake in the likeness. I want to be alive in that likeness so that the world can see and believe. And everybody said, God bless you.